there were some sensational features about the case. The man seemed to have got in at about ten at night and stayed till dawn. Apart, presumably, from the jewels, there were only a few trinkets taken, but the whole house had been turned upside down. And in the upper room, every single thing was flung about or torn open. Even the cushions of the chairs were ripped up with his bloody knife. And the police decided he must have been a revenged maniac as well as a robber. <laughs> I had all the theories. But, of course, I was a nobody then. And I was not in charge of the case. Well, it seemed to me from all that I gathered here and there that the old lady might have been an eccentric <laughs> but she was by no means a fool it seemed to me that she might have been one too clever for that man you see we presume he killed her to silence her but what if she had not been so careless what if she had got those jewels hidden away in some inconceivably cunning place? In the walls, perhaps? Floored down, bricked in? What if the only person who could tell him where they were was lying dead on the floor? Would that not account? Mrs. Manningham, for all that strange confusion in the place in which he was found. Can you picture him, Mrs. Manningham, searching through the night, ransacking the place hour after hour, growing more and more desperate until at last the dawn comes and he has to slink out into the pale street, the blood and the wreckage of the night left behind. And the deaf servant, sitting down in the basement, sleeping like a dog through it all. 